All right. So. Like this? Yeah, how are you? <laughs> All right, so let's get it cranking. Okay. Okay, so today is going to be a interesting show. Mario, I have Mario Laffer. He's a unique individual. If you've been to Carrot Express, or if you haven't heard of Carrot Express, they're all over South Florida, Miami, Broward, and now New York. Uh, Mario has a really incredible story. He's very uh, quirky, upfront guy. So I think this podcast is going to be <laughs> this podcast is going to be quite the interesting one. This is also the first interview that Mario ever does. Um, he was asking if this was a podcast or a movie. So <laughs> that's always good. So Mario started in his journey over 30 <clears throat> years ago, um, started in the clothing industry, then moved to restaurants, uh, started in a gas station in Miami and all the way up to 26 restaurants. I didn't start in a gas station. All right, we'll get to that. So I want to know exactly where you started. But With the picture I showed you, it started in a small little place in Little Havana. And then 250 square feet. Restaurant. 250 square feet. And then all the way up to 26 restaurants now. There's so much to unpack here. I'm, I'm really excited. I have a bunch of questions ask, uh, to ask. By the way, if you hear him in the middle of his story say, anyway, keep listening. That's the best part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> so Mario, thank you for coming on, man. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's been like a few, probably like a year in my mind that I wanted to get this done uh, with you. We've kind of like talked about it back and forth. So I'm happy that we actually did it, man. It's going to be cool. No, I know. So good, good things happen eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to uh, start to, because it's crazy where you're at today. I mean, 20 something restaurants, like millions and millions of dollars of revenue, all these things, these crazy things going on, opening in New York, South Florida. But I want to take it back a little bit to the beginning. I want to know who was Mario in high school. If we would have met in high school, who was Mario? What kind of what kind of kid were you? What kind of stu like were you a good student, bad student, troublemaker? Like if we would have met in high school, who was Mario Luffer? Hmm. <laughs> good. Going. Okay. Um, put the mic here like this. Let me see. Like put it in front of you. You can move it. There you go. Perfect. I, I was your normal, you know, teenage. Thinking about, you know, yeah. having a good time, yeah. but, but pretty much a, a, a good, a good guy, you know, Where, but you had like good, did you have good grades? Were you in sports? Like the reason I ask is because a lot of people watching this are younger, um, typically anywhere 18, 25, 26 years old. So they're either just getting out of high school or they're in college and they're kind of figuring the, their way out. And they right. think that right, right, how right. they are in high school is forever, you know? No. Well, in high school, I wasn't really the best in academics no no because i knew that i wanted to not be a doctor or a, a, an attorney i knew what i wanted to be a, an entrepreneur really yes so always from when you were in high school you kind of I, I knew that i i would I, my my thing was I, I wanted to get into the women's clothing business because that's what my dad that's what i saw for many years my dad manufactured and um when I was 19 years old or 20 years old, I went to college for two years to Miami Dade. When I graduated from Miami Dade, okay, I opened up my first little boutique at 20 years old. Wow! So yeah, right. women's clothing. My dad, he had a factory, maybe like 4,000 square feet, and the front of the warehouse, which which is now Wynwood, where he used oh, to be. Oh no way! I opened up maybe a, a little tiny where the, where the garage was in the front. I opened up a little retail store there when I was 20. And how'd you get the idea to do that? So you, you were leaving high school. You were, you were kind of like, not the, you know, you didn't well, have plans to go to like a college. I, I, I was really, um, when I was in high school, I thought I was going to be a professional highlight player. <laughs> <laughs> so I had no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I spent hours and hours and hours of my time thinking I, I went to highlight school and <laughs> I lived and, and, and breathed and slept. Highlight. Well, like in Magic City, like that, that didn't they have like a big highlight? Mi Miami Highlight. Oh, okay. Miami Highlight. But no, there used to be an amateur highlight court. Really? On Biscayne Boulevard and like in, in 151st Street. It's no longer there. A okay. garage in the back. So that was my thing. When, when I would get into something, I would get into something like heavily. When I was 15, I thought I was going to be an NBA player, basketball professional. And no. I, I, you know, Imagine, you know, five feet five and, <laughs> but I had a good shot. You had a good shot. I had a good shot. So whatever I, I do, I, I really, you know, dive in 
So you noticed that quality from, from the beginning, from when you were already in high school, you kind of already started seeing that whatever you got into, you were like full on. Possessed. I, 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 I get possessed when I, <laughs> when, when I really get into something. That's a, that's a great. So, all right. So you're leaving high school, you're going to college. What's running through your mind? Like, do you know what you're going to do for the rest have, of your life? Do you, are you like clear? Okay. This is my path or. Like, no, I wasn't at? clear at all. When I, when I, when I was in school, I, in Miami Dade or in high school, I wasn't, I, but I knew I wanted to work for myself. Okay. I knew I wanted to do something on my own. Where, where'd you get that? Like that itch from my something? dad. Okay. From your dad. My dad always, you know, always had his own business. So, so yeah. I guess I start from him not wanting to work for anybody since I was 19. I, I, I've had my own business since I was 19. Really? I really, since I was, the last time I worked for somebody when I was 18, when I was 19, I opened up my little 200 square foot retail store, women's clothing. For the women's clothing. Yes. And that lasted about maybe 10 years. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So what happened there? So you went to women's clothing. Obviously now you, you have a completely different path, bunch of restaurants, but so how, how did like, what happened? Did women's what happened was I, I was in the retail first, right? For like eight years, I was in the women's retail clothing, okay. retail selling. Then after eight or nine years, I started manufacturing clothing. I closed up my retail store and I started manufacturing again oh. out of my dad's factory. In the factory, you have like a little I had, space. He, he gave me a space with a cutting table. And you, so you learned how to do it? Yes, I, le I learned. I, I wasn't cutting, but I worked with my dad for many years. Oh. On the weekends, on Saturdays, I would go there and, you know, the cutting tables and laying out the piece goods. And, oh but, you know, God. I never cut like he did, but. <laughs> But I, I knew, you know, how to put the patterns down and all oh, that shit. and lay out the piece goods. So, so all that, so you learned all that, you did the, you did the, the manufacturing. I did the manufacturing and um, then things got really bad after like 10 years of manufacturing. I was like practically out of business. It be, is, was it something? Like a, a lot of the Oriental, you know, Orient from China, they were starting to manufacture there. Oh. And I couldn't even, nobody could compete here. People that were manufacturing, like me, you know, in Hialeah, it was impossible to compete. Wow. So Because it was too cheap. Like, they were getting them really cheap. Very, very cheap in China. Very cheap. Wow. And, and you didn't think of doing something like that? Or at that point, you're kind of... No, I wasn't, I wasn't big enough to really, uh, you know, to I wasn't really big enough. So at one point, I had about eight people, um, eight employees in my manufacturing. Wow. About eight employees. And it was women all putting rhinestones uh, back then rhinestones for Ugh. years were very popular and wow. so we would manufacture not besides t-shirts buying we would manufacture like women's sh like shirts blouses linen okay. and then they would be sent to the ladies that put the rhinestones and they would be sitting like i am you know studying each shirt no so i was down to like one employee and that was my mother Oh my yeah. gosh. My mother had never worked a day in her life and my dad passed away suddenly. And um my mom started working with me and trying to get off our our feet with the little that we had left. Right. So I had one employee left that was my mom and she was I'll never forget with her glasses putting on one rhinestone at a time in this shirt and I said, "Mom, stop it." Uh I had just received about maybe like $5,000 in, in linen piece goods. Okay. Fuchsia, yellow, white, all these colors, beautiful. And I was getting ready to lay them out, stretch it out, you know, cut them. And it was maybe for like a thousand outfits that I had. And I had maybe like 50 only sold. Who, who were you selling them to? I was, I was selling it to boutiques here in Miami. I was oh, going okay. around. I was like a one-man show no. selling to... You'd go walk in and say, yeah, hey, do you guys yeah, want to yeah, put yeah. this in the store? Goodness. So I thought I had like maybe out of the thousand, maybe 50 pieces sold only. Wow. And I didn't even have money to, to do the sewing. You know, I, it was like a thousand pieces to sew. And I didn't even have the money for the contractor to pay her. Oh, my God. Besides the, the piece goods, which he gave me credit. Yeah. So I called the guy up and his name was Eon, a French guy. I said, Eon. I appreciate you for many years, but I'm done. I don't, I'm sorry, but come and pick up your piece goods. And he came and picked them up. That same day, I went 
to find a, a location, a restaurant from like one second to another. Really? I, yes. And like, did you have? Did you always have kind of like? The yeah, I love food. I love okay. that. That that's when I was in the clothing. Then I knew that food was my thing. I love food, and I got that from my mom. Oh, my mom was. You remember? Yeah. My mom was the most incredible cook. So. So from literally one day you you. So one guy. day I said, "Mom, honestly, she had no idea." I said, "Put down the put it down, and I, this is the last day." What do you mean? I said, "I'm opening up a, a restaurant." What do you mean you? So I said, "Look, I'll be back in a little while." So my cousin Mario, <laughs> an attorney, he had his office around where I opened in Little Havana, on West Flagler and like Twenty Seventh Avenue. Right. So. I get in my car and I go to Little Havana and I'm looking for anything that says for rent. No. Yes, because I felt so like relieved, like not having to pay like heavy rent that I was paying in my factory or nothing. So I wanted to find a little place. I found a little hole in the wall for $300 a month. <laughs> yeah. And the, it was a space that I showed you. It was a, a yeah. Greyhound office with bars and, the, you know, yeah. with drug dealers outside. Yeah. And, and yeah. I said, you know what? I met the owner. I said, I'll take this place. And, and what, very naive thinking my, my, my cousin and his employees would order from me all the time, which never happened, <laughs> you know, one time or. It's a, it's a common uh, thing. Yeah. So we, we uh, opened there and it was three years of, of opening there and selling. My main clientele was, uh, we would lock our doors and outside it was like a hidden little alley, and that's where the drug deals would be done. With, oh. with it was Cuban men, and they would, I don't know what they would deal crack, and they became our clientele, our customers. My mother says, "Don't worry, let them in. They have money." Wow! So, out of the <laughs> three hundred that we sold a day, it was like one hundred and fifty dollars from these guys, from the from the little crackheads, from the crackheads, yeah. <laughs> And we weren't scared after that. We, we knew them, you know? Wow. Sometimes I remember one came in with his sha half shaved. He forgot to shave his other side. <laughs> the next day, one came in with his nose totally. He got into a fight. <laughs> These were your clients when you started. My clients. So, yeah, yeah. We oh lasted for God. three long, suffering years there. In, in the Little Havana? Yeah, location. Little Havana. Then I moved to downtown by the courthouse. Oh, okay. Wow, so so you went from the clothing right away. You got that little space from for the clothing to like a week later. You know, oh making tuna sandwiches and juices. Oh my god! It, it, did you have an inspiration of the type of restaurant you wanted yes. to open? Yes. Really? Yes. So you you always wanted to do because those of you who don't know the Carrot Express is it's a, maybe you'll explain it better, but it's kind of like a fast casual type of thing. I mean, explain a little bit of like what well, Carrot Express is. Well, it's like a fast casual, but really. Um, Gourmet, luxury, ho ho gourmet, really f homemade food. Yeah, it's like so. Where I got my inspiration was from this place in, in Coconut Grove called. It still exists. Yeah, when I was in high school, many many years ago, that was the, in seventy four. I was going to this place since nineteen seventy one called the Last Carrot. Right, right. It's still there, and the dad used to run it. He used to own it. The the daughters have it now, and. We used to, I used to love going there. And all, all he would serve is pita sandwiches, a tuna salad, chicken salad, hummus, mm. and juices. Okay, right? so very healthy things. Very healthy, but very, very simple. Like eight things on the menu. Oh, my gosh. So so you kind of like that concept. and you. Figured. I like that concept of how simple it was, and I, I loved his lifestyle. It was so simple. I remember going there with my friends, and you see Michael, the owner, um, like just making sandwiches and putting it in a picnic basket in the middle of lunch to go with his girlfriend to have lunch. I said, <laughs> man, there's the kind of life that I want after being so stressed out for so many years in the clothing business, oh my you gosh. know, trying to collect my money and coming up with new designs every year, every six, every three months. Oh this God. is what I want. The same little stupid menu like he has <laughs> and no stress going to work with a t-shirt yeah just just nice and relaxed and, and so so you didn't really have like a business plan or a like drawn out map of what no. you were going to do with carrot express it was just like it was gourmet carrot oh, back gourmet, then that was the first name because no, the reason i say that is a lot of people they have this like fear of starting their own business or taking the next step because they feel they need a i plan, had no fear at all financing no no i had 
I had no fear at all. Did I you, mean, and like, did you have finance? You just had some money saved up. I, I, mean, I had some money, right? Just enough to, to like pay rent. Just enough to like make give my security and maybe like two thousand dollars. And then I re I had zero money to buy my two hundred dollars of of groceries of food that I need to open. No, I. So my brother in law Abe gave me two hundred dollars in cash, which I still owe him. <laughs> and that's how that's how I was I, I, that's how I was able to open that day. With his two hundred dollars, I went and bought romaine, wow. carrots. No shit, yeah. that's fucking epic. So really, like zero money. You had a couple zero hundred bucks, money, a couple hundred dollars, zero money, zero money, and um, I would pay my FPL at the drugstore. It's called Robert's Drugs. They're still there. Oh yeah, on yeah, Flagler and Fifth. Yeah, the day my they were gonna cut my electricity. That was when I would go and pay in person. No. Not, yeah, I wouldn't pay when I got the bill that you give you a week. I would pay the day it was going to be cut off. Wow. Just to get you going. Just, just to get me going, you know, just because I didn't have the money to pay, oh, you know, on God. time. So it, it was like that for. And, and was it in that first store? Was it just you? Was it you? And no, you? no, no, no. It was my mom. Okay. My mom married. She remarried this guy, Manuel, which worked with us from day one. He was a chef in Cuba. My sister, Peggy. So it was the four of us. Yeah, Peggy. Tia Peggy. <laughs> the four of us. And Peggy or Manuel or my mom never saw a penny. It was only from, you know, for me and my kids, you know, to, to be able to live and, and, and pay my rent, you know, for free. You know, they worked oh for gosh. forever, right. for six years, you know. Just, yeah. just kind of like working to to just live. My sister basically. Peggy would would get there before we got there at eight in the morning, and she would squeeze some orange juice and carrot juice and and in little containers, and go door to door, like to the dentists and doctors' offices, and to sell no. juices. And I remember we were so happy one day when she sold twenty dollars to start the day off no. at eight in the morning with twenty dollars already. Yes. Let's go. Isn't that crazy? And, and we're going to get to where, where the business is at now, which is incredible. But uh, all right. So you're in this, this flag location. You said you were there three years, three years. And then, <clears throat> so what happened next? Like what, what's going through your mind? So it seems like what's going through my mind is that um, I know I have to get out of here and right. because I'm in the worst possible location for a natural food restaurant. Ah, because in it's Little not Havana, cheap. yeah, because it's not cheap. It's like relatively speaking, it wasn't inexpensive. It's not like it's more than McDonald's and things like that. Yes, yeah. yeah, but we practically like gave it away. You know, like really? our food. You know, we had five dollars lunch specials. Wow, soup and salad. What soup. year? What year was this, by the way? Ninety three. Nineteen ninety three. Okay. Yeah. So that's when it started. All right. So yeah, fast forward. Tell me about what was the journey leaving that? What's going through your mind? Like, are you motivated to keep going? Are you stressed? Are you? No, I'm very motivated to to keep going. That's that's why I I said I need to get to downtown Miami, downtown where all the office buildings are. You know. Yeah. So I knew the landlord uh, of uh, of the property of where I wanted to move, and it was a. Uh, right across from the courthouse. And there was a huge restaurant in the corner. The whole corner was a restaurant. Then down the street, uh, it was like a few empty spaces that he had never rented. Mm. So he gave me that space. He rented me the space. And by myself, I'll never forget, by myself, I didn't really have money for an architect. So my uncle did it for me for free. No. But... I had to do some demolition on the floor. I had to break the floor to do some plumbing. Very little plumbing I had to do. Wow. So I remember I didn't want to ask for any help because I didn't want to pay anybody. Carrying, I was carrying like all day um, cement from the floor that was broken bricks. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I got home, blood, blood was coming all out of me. <laughs> Oh my, my god! Out of my ass. <laughs> I swear. Don't say that. <laughs> no. Wow. So you literally did the demo of the floor by I yourself. I did the demo by myself. I mean, I did everything by myself back then. And so this would have been your. Did you keep the flagler, or you got you like you you finished that lease so, and then you started the new one? So no, I when I opened that one from one day to another, I I opened and I moved. Oh, you moved. Okay. Yeah. 
So I was in that space also for three years. Oh, in wow. that little tiny space. In downtown. In downtown. So there was a corner space that I told you, a huge corner space, two story, and nobody really ever made it there. So the guy who was there also closed. So the owner approached me, the landlord. He says, why don't you move to this space? So I said, great. So I was finally... You know, in, wow. a, in, a, in a normal restaurant, like with a hood, a gas, no. 3,000 square feet. Yeah, that's But huge. it was very, very tough because it was only breakfast and lunch. No weekends, holidays. It was by the courthouse. So uh, it was very limited hours. Like working professionals. In yeah, bankers like hours. Very, very, very limited. So we were there also three years. Wow. And it was, oh, I was able to sell it. I was able to sell my business because this guy came in. The busiest day I ever had on um, uh, my mother's grave was the day that this French man came in and asked to buy my restaurant. I had a line at the door. Really? I swear to God. No. Yeah. You probably, you, 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 I don't know if you remember him. And this, yes. was, this was Gourmet Carrot. It was time. Gourmet Carrot. So this French guy came in, Pierre, and he says, you know, and I was already, he didn't know. I, I wanted to move to South Beach with no money. I wanted to freaking move to South Beach. So I said, well, maybe the price is right. So I'm also not making it there. I was living with my kids and my wife in downtown in the ghetto, you know, paying $600 a month rent with oh. no car, traveling only by bus, you know. Oh. So it wasn't, you know, yeah. <laughs> it might have looked better. <laughs> I might I might have looked better, but my I still had, you know, I was still on the block. In the, in the red, I mean, yeah. zero. Wow. So you were, this is already nine years in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zero. And you were still like. Day to day, day, day oh to day, to day, to day, when I tell you. That's nine years in. Yeah. I, no, it took 20 years. Like, I was 20 years like that. I'll get to that. But wow. it was like 20 years like that. And what, what, I mean, I'm just curious, like, what kept you going? Because at that point. Because I, what kept me going? Because I just knew that I was so good at what I did. That what, whatever food I touched. People, if I made the chicken salad, it would be different than anybody's. People, if I made my tuna salad, I just loved it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, you know, everybody knew. My friends knew that. You know, they would come over because I, they would have the best yeah. lunch for you know yeah. Sunday football. You know, my my apartment was the place to come. That was that was the place to. Oh be. yeah. And did you have any cooking background? Or no anything, cooking or? background. Only only, only my what I inherited from my mom. You know really? her palate. Oh really. God. Only uh, not you inherit. Yeah, no. It, it, I've heard you mention your mom a few times. So, I mean, it seems like she was a pretty big part of your success. Even when you were doing the clothing, she was there Oh, yeah, no. You. My mom was always on my, on, uh, on my side, you know, and always trying to get me out of the hole and, yeah. you know, uh, giving me whatever she didn't have, you know. You know, max, maxed her out with her cards, trying, you know, Home Depot, uh for the new location in South Beach, the floor tiles maxed out her card. We never paid back Home Depot. She oh went, you know, God. filed for Chapter 11, you know, bankruptcy, wow. everything. So I sold this guy in South Beach, my restaurant. I was, it was going to be for $50,000. So for me, that was incredible. Oh Even though gosh. you need like $300,000, I didn't know, to open, to, 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 like to build like construct a... A build a, a restaurant okay south beach but i was going for south beach without nothing so you know i found a place on west avenue so this guy said look if i could put in if i can keep your name i'll pay you seventy five thousand. i said you can't keep cormac carrot but I'll, I'll i'll let you put golden carrot oh. so he put golden carrot and he gave me 75 grand wow and that's where i was able to uh hire an architect and and pay like thirty thousand dollars security deposit for for your South Beach location. Yeah, when I was in down. Well, what happened with the gas station? Tell me. Wh wait, wait. So when I when I was in downtown, I, I told you I wanted to move to South Beach to a very you know brand new shopping center, which is still there on Ninth and and the owners wanted to be wanted to see financial statements from me. So I knew one of the brokers, Lyle Stern, because he was a. A customer of mine, when he, whenever he had, he would do a lot of real. He, he owns a lot of properties and a broker, big broker. So he would come to downtown all the time, and he would love my my food. So he said, "Look, I'm going to come with the with the landlords. Very 
prominent, very wealthy, wealthy, the 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 Grutmans. Oh, okay. Yeah, not not the Grutman. Not, not the no no. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, you see. Anyway, this is a good time for the story. So they finally um, they were pretty like um, they were pretty surprised when they when they saw my 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 operation. You know, not having you know not having any money because I told them I I can't show you my statement of financial because I don't have any money. I just have my business and. They came and they fell in love with my concept so much that they helped me move to, to South Beach. So what they did was I needed to spend like $80,000 to get an exhaust hood. Oh, my God. So or else like you can't open with, with, without an exhaust hood. And it's a five-story garage b- building, right? On top so, of the restaurant. Yeah. So it, it was going to be expensive to have to go up to shoot. So they put they laid the money out for me and... They they pay, they put it into my rent in five year and sixty year payments sixty no. payments. Okay. So they helped me out so like they that. Actually helped you quite a bit. They, yeah, no, I couldn't have done it without them. Wow. So I opened up. I opened up there. Um, I got everything ready, you know, my permits and everything. I owed a lot of money to my general contractor. Everybody, my. Equipment guy every day would threaten me. If you don't pay me, I'm coming to take your equipment. Bob, please, man. <laughs> he never did, thank God. He wow. never did. I, um, so before I open, I remember, I don't know, I took a change of heart, a change of mind, and I, and I, I, turned, I opened a kosher restaurant instead of a natural food restaurant. Really? Yeah. What, what do you think? Like, why? What happened was I was outside of Whole Foods, okay. and this girl, lady comes, and I, I, she looked familiar, and I said, oh, she, uh, orthodox, religious-looking lady. And she says, oh, yeah, I know your sister, Peggy. And I see her, like, with a lot of food. I said, yeah, I'm opening up a restaurant here. She says, oh, you should make it kosher. So I, I said, you know what? I called up my sister, and I called up my mother. I said, you know what, Peggy? I think we'll kill it here, making it kosher. Anyway, I opened up kosher there, and it was a... Uh, after I opened up, I realized I made a mistake. <laughs> it's because that random lady. Yeah, after I after like a year or two years of opening up, I saw that you know the clientele that I was really really targeting. Not all of them. Not wasn't really the kosher, you know. And when I had the kosher restaurant, even though I was in South Beach, the non kosher wasn't really coming in because it just wasn't the atmosphere for it. So in 2011. After being there for three years of owing a ton of money, selling every day three or four thousand dollars, but never having enough money because I owed so much money. Oh my God. Uh, like in 2011, working there still with my, my, my parents and my ex wife. Right. Um, unfortunately, we, we got divorced. Yeah. And I just wanted a whole new start. Because I was so stressed out from the business. I was so stressed out from the divorce. I was so stressed out that I just wanted to sell it. And Really? Yeah, I wanted to sell it. So one of my, my manager bought my restaurant no, for $300,000, right? This is how many years in are you? This is like 11, 12 years in? About uh, like 11, 12 years in, right? Okay. So that my manager bought my restaurant because he thought that our food was so good and we just maybe weren't managing it right that he could definitely turn it around. He lasted less than a year because he, yeah. you know, he started bringing in frozen broccoli and nothing yeah. like, you know, nothing always like- never wanted to run out. Like we would run out. He wanted to always have stock of everything and yeah. frozen strawberries, you know, <laughs> everything frozen. He didn't last too long. Yeah. But I was ec- ecstatic to move. After I paid everybody off, I had maybe about $100,000. From that 300000 Yeah. I had $80,000, right? Oh so I wanted to continue in the business. Well, I just I keep asking. I wanted to continue in the business. Well, let me ask you this. Why did you, why did you want to keep continuing? Like, why did you want to start uh, Carrot? Or why did you want to start your restaurant chain to begin with? Like, what was your ultimate goal? Did you want... 
I understand obviously people, you want to make a profit and stuff, but what was the real why? Like, wh- wh- why did you do it? I just loved it. I mean, I, I, I love food. I love making people happy with food that I make. And it's it's, that was the biggest reward for me. Yeah. So when people come in and you, and you and you say that your food is great. Yeah. That, that was like, uh, meant more th- than money, unfortunately to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, cause you don't have a business degree or, or I, and I know that's why, I mean, I, I, maybe I wasn't the best operator, right? But I, but you had, but that. I had that in me, you know, and everybody would tell me you have, you have that. My mom would always tell me, yeah. you know, cause she, always trying to lift my spirits up, you know? Yeah. Because I mean, just from this, I mean, and there's so much more to the story, but just from this, like you've been already through the ringer Hell. Like, restaurant to restaurant, no money. You know, got your family working with you. Then you sell it for this and you owe people money. People are trying to take your shit. Like so I finally sell it. And then we open up another, I open up another kosher restaurant with my other sister and my brother-in-law um, in the waterways. I was the 10th restaurant to open up in this restaurant because nobody ever made it. It was a co- it's a, still a kosher shopping center, right? In the waterways. The that? waterways. That's by um, by Hollandale, like okay. by Aventura on okay. US 1. Right. So I took a space that is 10,400 square feet. Wow. With 410 seats. What? Five <laughs> different air conditioning units. <laughs> Damn. So you and $23,000 lost- rent. And a people month? were war- yeah, people were warning me. Don't oh look. God. I said, look, if anybody can make it, some people were telling me, carrot, gourmet carrot can make it. People, if anybody can make it, you can make it. Wow, wow. We we started off with fifty employees. Fifty. Fifty. I, I and I remember after Shabbos. And this is with eighty thousand dollars. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, and after, I remember the, the first Saturday night we opened up. We can't, you know, it's Shabbos, so you have to go after sundown on Saturday. I get there at 8 o'clock, and I was, like, not into going to work. It was such a struggle for me because 6 o'clock, I have to say bye to my kids, get fucking dressed to go to work. And anyway, I get to work, and everybody's waiting for me outside. 50 employees. 50. <laughs> anyway, a few months later, dwindled down to 6. No. It was 8 months we hadn't paid a penny rent because what we, we just didn't have no. didn't, the oh, the landlord comes in in front of everybody and starts saying every f word to me and that uh, you haven't paid your rent and i'm saying if you don't get out right now i'm going to call the police <laughs> you tell your landlord what i told my landlord that <laughs> you got some balls so man. yeah he, and i was embarrassed as shit cuz he comes in like a real low life, and those people, in an Israeli meetings. guy, and everybody's hearing him, and I'm so embarrassed. So, the next day I come into the chain, right on the door. Oh yeah, I w- I had to leave everything there. I was able to sneak out a little three foot electrical, uh, like um, refrigeration, like a sandwich unit. That I used to make the sandwiches. We had a lot of those, but I had one that you put the tuna on top and the and the romaine, yeah. you know, like Subway. You could, so I said, you know what? I'm taking this with me because <laughs> one day I'm gonna do something. No, I swear to my mother. So you rented this place. You didn't pay rent for months. Yeah, this guy came in in the middle of the day and then put. I mean, the next day put the chain. You're and you're locked out. I'm I'm locked out. Oh and, my god, you're and nuts. I, and I was able to get in right. You snuck your way in somehow. Snuck in and, and took out that re- that that thing, right? How that much is that thing worth? That so, refri- so. What was that? How much is that little thing worth? Just Maybe so like fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Two thousand dollars, and I wouldn't be able to ever buy one again. You know, I, I yeah. wouldn't be able to do what I want again. You know, I would have to buy one. So, so I rented a freaking um, one of those uh, U-Haul. Not U-Haul. I rented a like a like a what do you call those like a a storage. Okay. I rented a yeah, like a little storage unit. Or, or a storage truck? No, no, storage. Uh, what do you call those? Like, yeah, storage unit that you yeah. put things in. Uh-huh. I, I rented a storage unit just for that. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> just for that. Like $300 a month. Because I, I knew I was going to do something. Oh, my God. Anyway, so, honest to God, I, I did it twice. I'm not lying to you. And in, in like the 
three months that I was in there until I finally moved out and was able to use it. I'll tell you. So I remember going there. I remember going there, and so I wouldn't lose practice. I would. There was nothing in the little containers, and I would, you know, take like the make believe pita, take the romaine, no, stuff it in. Nobody watching me. I mean, <laughs> nobody. I'm not doing this like you know. I'm not doing this so anybody could, you know, just, could just like in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just doing so I don't lose practice. Oh my god! I, but it was in here, man. I mean, you know, I knew I, I was gonna get back in the food business somehow again. Wow! So, by, by the way, he keeps looking over there because his uh, beautiful daughter is my girlfriend, and she's sitting in the room there, so okay. he's looking at her. But so, um, so, so I, so you're, you're, you're so practicing I, the pita. You don't have any restaurant anymore. I don't have any restaurant, and it's uh, New Year's Eve. 2011, going into 2012, and this is a recession, by the way. Like right now, where you're talking about, like because the recession happened in 2010, so you're right now full blown recession time. Yes. So well, be, well, before let me tell you just two minutes before the New Year's. So I was I had to move out of my apartment. My kids had to move in with their mom because I I couldn't afford my apartment, and I and I moved in with my mother. In, in her one bedroom, living on a on the mattress, uh, in the living room, we would we would move her. You remember? We would we would move her table, wow. And I would put the mattress there. Oh my god! And that's god. where I slept for like six months. So in those six months, I tried getting different jobs. I worked in three different restaurants. One day I worked in Carpaccio's. One day in the kitchen. I worked in three. No, like you actually went to find jobs. I went. I remember. One August, going on, on Biscayne Boulevard in August in the rain, 53 years old, with my cousin maybe a resume of my experience, which didn't mean shit, you know, and knocking on Duffy's, knocking, knocking on Five Guys doors. Whoa. Five Guys <laughs> on Biscayne oh Boulevard God. in the rain of summer, and, and these, all these young kids are working there, 18, 19 Whoa. years old. And I'm there with my resume, and and I'm like an old man, you know, trying to get a job, you know, and nobody hired me. Finally, I, I got hired for a day, and I, it wasn't for me. So I tried different odds and jobs on my own, making food out of my mother's kitchen. We, we did it for a few days. We bought six igloo coolers. No way. Yeah. And, and you're how old at this point? Just, just 55. 55. I was, uh, no, 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 I was like 51. 51 years old. Yeah. We bought igloo coolers, six of them, and we bought containers to put the wraps in. So we made tuna sandwiches, chicken salad sandwiches. Gosh. We bought containers to put orange juice and papaya juice I made, and my mother made soup. My cousin Becky told me, look, I work in an office building, and um, why don't you come to my office building? We'll all buy from you. Really? So. Oh, my God. We loaded up that day the igloos with straps, I swear. We put straps because it was one igloo on top of another, and it was six igloos. My mother, I w strapped, rolling the igloo, right? So we got to my cousin Becky's office, and we sold like $50. And then after that, we, it was like 12 o'clock, 12.30. Wait, what do you mean lunch is over? Oh, we ate already. We started knocking on other doors. So we started going to other buildings. We were getting thrown out left and right. Sir, you can't, you can't come in here. You can't solicit. Oh, my gosh. The next day, I said, you know what? We're going to downtown Miami, Mom. We're going to this huge so you're, building. So your mother's helping you still at this point? My mother's helping me. And she, had, she, she died like maybe like a year later because she was sick with her lungs. And she was helping me, right? And Harley was having a very hard time. So we went to downtown. And the biggest building, I said, we're going to go in there, right? So we went in there, and we couldn't get in there. I said, but you know what? There was a, a bunch of little retail stores. So we sold like $40 again. And I was so upset. I remember getting back to my car, my, my car, my mother's car. And we had like $60 in tickets no. from overtime. And the, I remember going home, going to where Jessica was with her mom. And her mom comes out. Of the of her apartment, and 
what happened? And I started freaking crying, man. I opened up my coolers and fucking everything is there. I thought that, you know, that's it. I'm back on my own. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out and get business myself. And, and it, it wasn't like that. Oh. Nobody knew who the hell I was to buy my food. And nobody let me in the buildings. And that was one of the downer days of my life because I said, you know what? This is it. I'm going to go out and sell my food to people. And I remember going to her house that day and opening up my trunk and all the food is there. And I felt like I wanted to die. Oh my I felt goodness. like I wanted to die. All right. So then it starts getting better. So <laughs> not, that was like the, like the, so that was like the lowest That point. was the lowest. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you've, you've, at this point of the story, you've still been through some stuff. Like, it's, it's just incredible. This is why I wanted to have you on, because your, your restaurants are, like, incredible, man. Um, and, like, where you're at today, which we're going to get to, is, is I mean, so t to hear, like, all this, so many people are going through so many things in their life right now. And, and this is why I wa wanted to bring you on, because this is, I mean, the journey. And you're just still getting started in the story, which is freaking incredible, man. And, and you have a wife and multiple kids. Yeah. Um, living in a one bedroom apartment, you know, eating tuna and, and going from here to there and no, still no, going not, and going. Yeah. Like. Right, 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 right. So, uh, yeah, it was a sacrifice. We, I, I, besides the one, besides the refrigeration, I was able to take out of the waterways. I did have one case of tuna, six cans of tuna. <sighs> and we lived on that. My kids and I, uh, tuna and macaroni, uh, for like six months. Oh my goodness. Anyway, it was New Year's Day. It was New Year's Eve, 2011, going to be 2012. And my sisters were calling me, come on, don't stay home. There's a party in, in a house in Aventura, their friend's party, our friends in, in their house. They were having a bunch of people there. So I finally got convinced to go. Thank God. I didn't want to go out. Yeah, you were just I was more bummed out about my business more than my divorce, to be honest with you. Really? Much more. My divorce maybe was like twenty percent and eighty percent. It was all my, you know, my my. I have no degree. I have nothing, and I'm gonna be like this for the rest of my life, you know, because that's what I'm thinking for sure. It's a tough pill to I mean, swallow. I mean, uh, when I our when my kids our getaway was going to Bell Harbor shops and just going around and 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 looking at people eating. Remember, we would go to Carpaccio's wow. and and I remember like we would go and just you know I would. Not, I'll be crying inside because I, I would be watching people eating carpaccios and I'll say, wow, I came from this kind of background, you know, upper middle class. And I'm like so poor. And, and that, was our, that was our thing, you know, just going, going for a walk around the wow. mall, uh, about harbor shops. Yeah. So then um, it was New Year's and I went to the party and it was, I remember 11 o'clock and I'm, trying to like not be bummed out in front of all my friends. And I am so bummed out. Everybody's with their couples, you know, and everybody, and I, even though I'm, I'm, you know, having a drink and having a good time, I'm, I have this knot in my stomach because I know, I know what tomorrow I'm going to wake up with, with no business, no nothing. You know, I already know how tomorrow's going to be. So it was about 1130 and this guy was at the party. His name is also Mario married my cousin Sally. He was back then maybe like um, late 60s and she was in her 40s. He owned the, the gas station and the car wash on Alton Road and, and 18th. Okay. And he owned a bunch of properties and a bunch of gas stations. Very wealthy guy. So he says to me, and they're there that night. My cousin's there with Mario. Man, I miss your food so much because he used to be a customer of mine also. I miss your food so much. And he knew my whole story that I was totally broke because he was married to my cousin. So then he says to me, listen, I, in my car wash, you know, I have inside a sofa with a TV. If you want, I could move that sofa and you could put a little juice bar there. Oh my The second God. he said that, I ran to my sister and these are my words. I'm back in business. <laughs> I swear. <It's> so <laughs> I'm back in business. <laughs> you have 
such a like such a unique way of like looking at yeah at, yeah at nothing things. nothing you'll nothing you'll see you back down. you'll see when, when when we get further on that nothing would pull me back and you and you'll wow. you'll even see more after so i said i'm i'm back and I, you were, it was it was a 12 it was like 10 to 12 and i'm so fucking happy the next day i i get to like a 10 in the morning to the gas station and he didn't get to like the one o'clock in the afternoon you know he was partied yeah. out you know yeah so I'm waiting there, and he says to me, okay, look, there's a space I'm talking to you about. I tried it once to open up a, a deli here. What do you call that, like that famous, like, meat, like deli meat um, that everybody buys? Uh, you know, they sell, like, very popular brand. Deli meat? Yeah, it's a deli meat. Very. I'm not sure. Anyway, he says, he tried to open up. He opened up a deli, right? And he said, you should do well. I was selling... Between three and five hundred dollars a day, I said, "Really, great, man! I I would take that five hundred dollars." So, I said, "Great." So, he didn't, of course, no security deposit, no nothing, and no rent right. for the first month. Nothing in writing. Nothing in writing. Just nothing, which just was like a big word mistake. Nothing in writing. Wow. So I opened up there with my mother and Manuel, and making. Juices and making sandwiches with a with a little prep station that I had, that I told you I had it in the U-Haul. Yeah, yeah. I was able to bring it there, and that's where I, where where I made my sandwiches. So I started wow. there, and it blew up. Really, this is in the back of a gas station, right? Yeah, it wow. blew up. It blew up that I was selling like fifteen hundred dollars a day no. with I swear to God with with like um, two or three items on my menu. Just tuna sandwiches and and chicken salad and hummus and and, and my juices. Wow! And, and how did you get so much traction? Because, man, when I went in, brother, you know, That's it. whatever I anything that I was gonna make, yeah, my veggie burger, my tuna salad. Oh man, the best. I'm you know what I mean? Just <laughs> and they tried it. The young kids tried it, and. I started doing great there and people started coming in, you know, like Dave, Dave Gruppman from, the, from live. Okay. He came in and, and he, he was the one that told me, I want this kind of rap make for me. And I made his rap and we called it the live rap, which is my most popular rap today. Oh my God. So he started telling people. And then all of a sudden the, the owner, a Spanish guy married to my, he says to me, ah, you know, I, there's too much commotion in here already. I'm we need to take away some of your stools. So I had eight stools in the beginning. Then he took away four. A week later, I come in, there's only two stools. Oh, my God. A week later, I come in, there's no stools. So, Mario, I, it's just too much commotion. But meanwhile, he never let me from day one have my register. He wanted to know how much I sold. So my customers would have to go to the front where they... Where they paid their gas or they paid oh, their mm -hmm. their cigarettes and paid to it. pay. So, and then I would have to wait three four days begging for my money, because he was a sick sick individual for money. Sick. Wow. So, I would have to wait for my money, and it was always short, and I had to keep quiet because I would get thrown out. You know. Oh my gosh. I remember one day he came in. It was like six o'clock. He comes in with my cousin. <clears throat> he pulls in. With his Rolls Royce, he had a Rolls Royce. Honestly, he pulls in with his linen guayabera. <laughs> with his <laughs> with his linen guayabera. Yeah, just plug he, he pulls in with his linen guayabera. What are you doing here, Mario? No, I forgot to get my tip because he would share the tip from the guys that wash the cars. So he went in and got his twenty dollars, and then he went to Lincoln Road to have dinner with his wife. Oh, sick guy. $20, Sick guy, he would go and get twenty dollars from the guys that working all day trying. But so that was the deal that the owner of the property, the owner of the gas station, you know, he would also get tips. Wow! So then one day he came to me and says to me, "Look, I can't have you here anymore. I can't have you here." Anymore. I said, "Mario, what do you mean?" He says, "I can't have you here anymore because it's just too much commotion." He threw me out. Three days later, he opened up the same juice bar as me. He, my cousin Sally. Opened up. It's called um, Milk on Nuts, which they still have in a. They opened up. No way. Trying to duplicate 
my rest my menu. And after like a few months of being there, I was able to afford a young kid to work me. So he was helping me because my mother could hardly even work anymore. So um, I had given him my recipe for my cilantro lime dressing. Oh, my gosh. They paid him off. They took him to work for, with, with him. Your, your employee? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I'm like with nowhere to go. So I take again. That's something. I take that, that my furniture and I bring it to my mom's apartment. Right, that that four footer, the same one from yeah. the the yeah. big restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yes. Wow. So I'm looking, and across the street from the gas station on 18th and Alton, there's a space that you could never, ever, ever see. Many, many years I'm living in Miami, you would never see tucked away. So I pull in there, and it's vacant. I'm looking, and there's no way I'm opening it here. The next day I come back. I look again. And the thing is destroyed inside. Empty, destroyed. So there's a phone number that I call up the landlord. And the landlord comes in. The landlord speaks to me. I said, look, I have this situation. You know, I, I was in the gas station. Oh, it was my last week. I'm sorry. I hadn't gotten, it was my last week in the gas station. Oh, my God. So, so you're already shopping for your next yes, place. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. So the guy comes in. He's an orthodox religious guy. He comes in with his hat on, his suit. And I, I said to him, look, uh, I really am interested in your space. And how can we work it out? I said, well, he says, well, it's $3,000 a month rent. Just give me two months security and then, one month, and then it's yours. $9,000, right? So... Make make it short. I and the guy was so impressed with my little freaking business. He had that empty for three years. Honestly, he had it empty for three years. Right? He says, "Let's do it." So I paid him the three thousand dollars the first month rent, and that was it. Right? So I was there for three years without a license. Oh my goodness! All I did was put tile on the floor and made a juice bar i didn't have an exhaust hood i was cooking there like like no tomorrow cooking there it's fish smelling up the whole place <laughs> and um Incredible, man. and with no licenses so and my restaurant was a half a mile away from the convention center where is the the main center for the for the inspectors for the for the inspectors for for Miami Beach, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's where they, that's where their offices are, right? So they would they all became friends and customers on my mind of mine, right? For three years, Mario, please, the plumber would tell me, Mario, you need to do the plumbing. The fireman will come in, Mario, come on, man, your 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 risk here would you don't you don't have no sprinklers, you don't have anything. Finally, one day after three years, I get there's a court hearing for me in the convention center. Oh my gosh. So just when you're starting to get like back, you got your group. Is the restaurant doing well? Yeah, yeah. the restaurant's doing well. And I'm starting oh to God. like feel good. And again. I'm starting to make plans to get to get an architect, which was thirty thousand dollars, to start making plans. You know, you can't do the plans without an architect first. Right, right. So I was already even bef I, I was gonna do it because I was able to ha I had the money already to, for the to, to get to the get plans. The yeah. But I, I, I had to go to court. So I go to my I go to I go to the court here. I go to, it's on a court. I, I go to the convention center, right. to the second floor, and there's a desk like this, a huge oval desk, and there's a bunch of people sitting there, and a lady, a judge, right? But with a regular, yeah. regular attire on. And I'm there with my manager, because I want them to come, because I was drenched in sweat, nervous as shit. Oh my God. And the lady, the judge says, before we start off, I just want to tell you guys one thing. What happened the other day? I went to have lunch at Carrot Express at 11.30, and guess who's there instead of school? My daughter. No way. And they all start cracking up, and they broke the ice, and they said to me, Mario, we love you, man. Really, we love your food, and we love you, but you need to get this done already. So that's the biggest, like, thing that, you're saying about taking chances or 
nobody in their right mind, right, would go full throttle, like everything is okay, and open up a restaurant Nothing. without no license, oh no paying taxes for three years because I didn't have a license. Oh, my goodness. So, so everything like cash or 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 you would take credit cards and stuff, but it was just like like there was nothing leg legit about it. No, no, and I was depositing, but I was depositing most of it, but not really reporting oh my most of gosh. it. And so, for me to get my license, I had to pay off. I had to get down, you know, get to zero balance on my taxes. Oh my gosh! So I owed about eighty thousand dollars in taxes and. I, I, I hired an attorney and she knocked it down to like 30,000. So okay. I had, I paid her 10% of whatever she saved me, $5,000. She saved me 50. I paid her $5,000. So I was able to get my license, right? Wow. So I got my license. And then a couple of months later, this man comes in and I'm thinking, you know, I'm doing fine. You know, um, maybe making, you know, a thousand dollars a week. I'm able to, you know, pay my rent, not living with my mother. And this man comes in about my age and he wants to speak to the owner. I said, I'm the owner. And he says to me, look, I have a, a restaurant in Midtown, a coffee shop, and I'm ready to go out of business. And I love your concept. Maybe we could do something. Hmm. So I ended up opening Carrot Express in Midtown with him without putting any money and becoming 50% partner. Wow. So that was uh, the first great thing that happened to me. I was going to say, because like up to now, everything that's been happening is like challenge after challenge, challenge. after, after this and getting kicked out. It, like everything is like right. people testing, you know, the world, like testing, kicked testing, testing, testing you. And so then, then finally, he, you so, get then, like a break. He, so then I come in, he comes in and um, he says, you don't have to no money or anything. So what I did was, like, I, no, like the way I am, the $30,000 that I had, I put it all into the new Carrot Express. I made the bar. Like, I, you know, I, right. I put the, the, the sandwich prep station, not a two, three-footer, an eight-footer. I didn't have to, cause, but they weren't set up. I didn't care. I wanted to open up because I knew, you know, I yeah. knew. So then I went in there, and then a few months later, he was so happy with the sales there, he and I still had my place in South Beach, that hole, that he offered me like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it, for the hole, for the hole, for so, like the restaurant, for the restaurant. Wow! So I sold it to him. Okay. And um, I sold him that, and he was paying me monthly that for like two years. I, I he was paying me monthly, so I had you know some money I don't know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars coming in every month for like two years, <clears throat> and wow. so he bought that from me. Right. So at and this point, you're just in. I one have location. one only. Oh my gosh. And and getting royalties from the other one. From the other one. Oh, because he wanted to leave the name and everything. He yes, just wanted leave to own. the name, even though I wasn't a, f a franchising. I was, and I really was. I did it illegal, right? right. He was still paying me royalties. You know. Oh my goodness. Six percent. So then I, I I had that one open, and my salesman from Cisco at that time. He wanted to open up a Carrot Express for his wife and on 72nd on the location we have now in Collins. Okay. And it was so much going back and forth, so much bullshit with him. So I was speaking to the landlord about this, about that space for a Carrot Express for my event, for my salesman, for his wife. And the salesman, I mean, the, the, the owner of that location says to me, man, I love Carrot Express. When, when I want to open up a Carrot Express here with you. So I said, he says, you don't have to put any money. Oh, my gosh. And I'll put up all the money, and you run it, and, and, I, and you get 50%. So I said, wow, wow, AB, okay, that sounds good. So I said, look, we're going to have to put in like $10,000 each. That's all I have to put in for the architect. If that's all you need to put in, we'll put in $10,000 each, and you don't have to put any more money in. So we put in the $20,000, right? And we hadn't started the architectural plans yet. So I called him up like three days later. I said, Aby, I changed my mind. I do not want to, again, be babysitting a store. My mind is different. I want to I wanna one day franchise it, and I want to start opening up Carrot Expresses. Mm. 
and I'll give you back the ten thousand that I spend, you know, that you spend, and I'll, I'll and I'll take the loss. And he says, "Man, you can't do this. We already, you know, started. I already invested ten thousand. I really want to open it with that." I said, "Ab, I do not really. I, I'm not gonna run it. I'm not gonna run it. If you if you could find somebody to run it, the next day he calls me up. Okay, look, we'll buy the franchise from you. So, I, like I told you again, I still wasn't a franchise, right? So I sold them the Carrot Express." For thirty-five thousand dollars for the friend, for the name, and the teaching of the recipes. And after like a few months of him have been being open, he says to me, "Look, man, I I want part of Carrot Express. I I want to be your partner." Really? Yeah. So he he bought um he bought up a, a part of Carrot Express. He bought forty percent of Carrot Express of the full thing. Yeah, for eight hundred thousand dollars, right? Wow! And I own sixty percent. Okay. Also, oh, now you're now you're like things are looking up. Oh, now man. you're like shit. This is this is shit. My hard work is paying off. Oh yeah. You know, cause, so I have and, cause, I have eight hundred thousand dollars. You know. I, wow. You know. Oh my. For God. sure, and I still own sixty percent. So what? What? I just curious. What's going through your mind, like when he made you that offer, like because that's at this point, it seems like that's the biggest amount of money that's <coughs> ever come. I'm your playing way. hard to get. Really? You know, oh yeah. It started off at half a million. Am I paying you more more than half a million? I said, "Baby, I'm not taking less than a million. Really? I, I'm gonna wait till it gets to a million of valuation, and then we'll talk." Wow. He says, so "Mario, you, so you kind of like I, yeah, you still yeah, I, I don't want to wait." He says to me, "I'm not gonna wait six months or a year. If you don't want to wait six months for a year, let, let's compromise. How about eight hundred thousand? Deal." Oh my God! Where did that come from? That confidence in the? I mean, you've had it all along, but. Like at that point in the negotiation, like you could have been walking away from five hundred thousand dollars, which is a, you know, big chunk of change. Like, what had you like? What do you mean I couldn't? Because like he offered you five hundred and you held your ground, even though you wanted more money, right? And like, what made you like? Oh no, because 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 I because I oh right because because I knew that I could get more from him. Oh okay okay. I knew I could get more from him, and you were confident. And if I didn't, I would have taken the five hundred. Oh okay. Oh yeah. (laughs) That, That that was my. You know, my my other route. <laughs> so, A.B., now you know it costs you. But now... So, I said, there's no way for less than a million. And my part, my accountant's telling me, Mario, don't fucking lose this opportunity. Anyway, so we did it for 800 right? Wow. So, he owned... Um, bet- I owned 60. Yeah, and 40. between the other three guys, they owned 40, right? His, A.B. His owned, group. <clears throat> A.B. owned a majority, 27%. Right. A.B. comes from a very, very, very wealthy family. His father owns, like... 60 department stores in Venezuela, children's, like from A to Z, from clothing wow. to, to cribs. I mean, Everything. very wealthy. But it seems like he knows how to do business he, well. He, he, he went to, I forgot what college, but he, 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 he has a doctorate in business. Very, wow. very, very, very knowledgeable with business. But he tried many different things. He tried having, he tried real estate. Then he got into the moving business. He had moving like for two years. Right. And so he got into the business and he, he owned, they owned 40, I owned 60. And then about a year later, he says to me, man, I, I, I own 27 and, and I really, to, to motivate me more, I really want more. So I said, I can't sell you anymore because I'm down to 60. So he made me an offer. So I said, okay, look, I'll sell you 9% and I'll stay with 51%. So then he paid me another 800000 Wow. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so now things are getting real good. How old are you at this point when this is happening? How many years ago is this? Two years ago. Two years ago. So like, <sighs> two years ago. That is insane. So he says, I'll pay you another 800. No, he says, I'll pay you a half a million for the, for the nine. So again, the same thing. did the story. same thing. A million. I'm not, because I know what's going to be worth. And it's true. I know. I knew yeah. it was going to be worth more already because these guys were on board and we we're going to blow it up. He was going to blow it up. AB blows it up. You know, I knew it. He's like, his yeah. dad. He's not going to have five like I would have or 10. No, right, no he, he wants 50, 100. That's the way he is. And did you guys have a conversation of what your vision was and what his vision was? Oh, and- yeah, it was the same. Okay. Because it's not easy to have business partners. Oh, no. And then, so, you know, you guys have to be aligned in the oh, direction. Oh, it was the same. It was the same vision. We wanted to blow so it up. you guys kind of like combined forces and it seemed like a good mix. So then he even got more motivated owning, you know, 36% mm. of the business. Wow. So, and then from there, 
we just started opening them more and more and um he, and he knows not to ask me to, to sell anymore. <laughs> I said, don't ever. <laughs> he knows your number is way higher no, now. No. No, and and no we are in the middle of selling a percentage now. Wow. But not to it, him. So, so tell us about what it looks like today. Like what is the Carrot Express umbrella, like that operation? How many employees, restaurants, like wh what's right, going on? Right now we have over 200 employees. Wow. And... 25 stores operating and six stores coming in the next six months already. So 31 total. No, no. 20 now open. Oh, okay. 20 open. And six, 20 operating and then six already signed. Six leases signed already. So in the Opening works. up every two weeks one for the, this, every month for the next few wow. months. 26. 26 by the end of the year we'll have. Goodness. So 26. So you got over 200 employees now. It was literally when it just started, it was just you, your, you know, your sister, your mom, and one other guy. Yeah. And, you and the funniest part that I really can't get over is when I see my sales combined today for one day, and then I see my sales when I had my my three hundred dollar days wow. when I opened up in ninety three, and then I see my sales now for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a day. <sighs> it's like <laughs> it's like what the <laughs> fuck just happened here? Yeah, I still I still have to like pinch myself sometimes because wow, you know, you don't get a second chance like that sometimes. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, I'm it, very lucky that, you know, things worked out the way they did. You know, you, that God was on my side and yeah. things aligned for me. I went to that New Year's party that night. I met my partner, AB. Yeah. You know, you have to have some luck. That resilience. That, yeah, it, no. Yeah, you, ha you have to really, you know, when I was unemployed, man, I felt and not doing with no degree and knowing that I would work for $12 an hour, wow. just that pain in my stomach. You know what I mean? That pain. That I try to explain to people, and, and maybe you can't understand it because you because you haven't, you, yeah, you, 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 you don't have it in you, or you haven't felt that desperation. Yeah, and do you feel like things happen for a reason? Like, do you believe in in like uh, how do you say it? Like uh, karma, not karma, like, like a karma fate. or like a fate or divine intervention? Because the things that happen to you, it seemed like I, I mean I don't believe in pure coincidences like that. I feel like things happen for some kind of reason, whether we know it or not. You know, depending on whatever faith you believe in. Like, do you believe in something like that? Oh yeah, like, no, for sure. I I know that um that God because if you would have never gone to that party that day, if you would have never you know tried to find that location for your for exactly. your for your Cisco uh, sales exactly. rep, exactly like it, things kind of led up in a weird way that ended up in a, this this yeah. this chaos that like. Ended up so well for you, uh, and no, you, I, you had some belief in you because things weren't well for you in the first, you know, no, no, I, 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 b I believe that definitely God intervened. I mean, and and finally, man, you know, after so much struggle, I, I was able to get out of the hole, and then in I a know, very big way. and then I know for sure that um, before my mom passed away, I had opened up in the gas station, right, and that was the only time that she really ever saw success in, in her and in my entire life Wow! is those six months that, mm. well, not really. When I was in the gas station, she started seeing success there. Yeah. She started seeing people were coming. And yeah. No. And, and seeing Mario happy and, you know, yeah, you know, selling and me, you know, being looking different. Wow. And then she was, and then she, she was able to see my, you know, Alton road. When I opened up there. So when she passed away, Right? Unbelievable, man. How many things happened to me? Good things. Only good things. Wow. So I I know for sure. Then people say, my God, man, Mario, you know, give your mom a break, man. Let her rest. <laughs> yeah. And nonstop. Nonstop for me. Nonstop. Nonstop. Wow. Nonstop. So, so literally yeah, like. If you ask if I believe, I, I believe in God and, and, my, and my mom definitely. Cause she knows, you know, the, how much we went through, and and I, I do know that, you know, she's, you know, on my side. Right. Yeah. She was. I mean, she was there from the beginning. From the beginning, like. with the from the beginning. From the rhinestones. From the, the rhinestones. You got it right. From wow. the rhinestones to me moving out to living in her floor to <sighs> maxing out her cards and maxing Home Depot. out her cards to wow. When her with the with the with the little you know igloo. And I'm, I'm yes. rushing her mom. We have lunch hour the next day. God, did we know she had a heart attack that day? Because we went to the hospital Gosh. and that, they said that that day she had a minor heart attack. 
I'm screaming at her. She's down the block. <laughs> Vamos, come on, we're gonna miss the freaking lunch and we have all this food. Oh my goodness. <sighs> wow. That is incredible. I mean, that is that's I, I don't even know. It's like a, it's like a loss for worse from like literally a hundred dollars a day in the like the worst neighborhood <sighs> to hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day sometimes on, on your restaurants. I mean, like what what is what goes on through your mind? Like, what is day to day like for you now? What, what goes on through your mind? You know, I imagine you can't forget what this what has happened. I mean, this was not so long ago. Just right. ten years ago, you were you know going through some 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 shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like what goes on in your mind in the daily basis? Like, what does your day look like now? How, you know, what's Mario like now? I'm super super happy every wow. day. That's incredible. Uh, and. I, 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 I I feel I, I'm still like like from '93. I I wake up with the exact same motivation every single day. I can't wait to get up wow. to go to work. I know this about you. <laughs> fuck, you still go sometimes to the on kitchen? Saturday and Sundays. If, sometimes I work on Saturday, but when I don't, like today, I can't wait for tomorrow already. Wow. So yeah. in a way, I'm happy about that. In a way, I'm not because I'm so <laughs> obsessed. Yeah. With Carrot Express, uh, you know, maybe that's like, you know, kept me kept you going. from bettering other aspects of my life, you know, maybe from thinking more about maybe meeting somebody. Yeah. And I don't. All I think is about my next new recipe or you know, that, <laughs> that, that's all I think about. So, this is true. I know this is true for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go swimming in the morning and an hour, hour and a half, and that's where I get all my best thoughts. I get my thoughts about my things, um, the new creations or what's happening, but I never forget at all, you know, where I, w what happened to me. Yeah. I don't forget what happened to me. And if we have a bad day in a store, oh, fuck, man. You know, I'm worried, you know, like right now, like in Flatiron, you know, to the new, not in Flatiron, in Bryan Park. In New York. In New York. It's, we've only opened a month and it's still... We're still, you know, getting to be getting known there, and it's a little bit of a struggle. So, I worry, you know, wow, am I going to go out of business? You know, yeah, yeah. you know, I worry, you know, am I going to lose everything? Yeah. You, I, I still, I still worry about that sometimes. And I, and you know, what I think about, well, at least if I lose everything, I know at least I have my sister, the carrot. I'll have her royalties coming in every month. It's freaking crazy, <laughs> you know. But it's crazy, yeah. that I think that if I lost everything. I'll still have the carrot, my sister's carrot, which right. I get royalties from. Right, just that a couple I, thousand I, bucks. Whatever. Yeah, a couple, but I'll still have that. Oh, my I gosh. I, I still... It's like a paranoia. Yeah, I still, you know, think about that once a month. But I feel that is what really makes some of the best entrepreneurs. Oh, you yeah. always have to have some fear of paranoia. Oh, yeah. Fear of competition. And I know a lot of people say it's unhealthy, you know, the competition or the paranoia, but... I disagree. Like, I think you have to have that. And I, it's in my business, I think that as well. But An example of that, what you're saying, you know, Pura Vida. I don't know if I should be mentioning their name here, but. Yeah, this is open, man. Pura Vida is opening up in Miami Shores. Right, right. It's a competitor. Five feet away from me. Right, right. So that really lit a fuse in me. That's so I've already done so many things to improve my menu and, and, and I'm doing so many more things now right. to improve my menu. And it's like a fire. And that wasn't going to happen if he wouldn't have moved there, maybe. But I am so motivated now. I mean, we have a central kitchen. I have this incredible baker who's going to be working with us now. We're going to be having our own bakery out of our central kitchen. Wow. Your new juices, your new smoothies. New juices, new smoothies, a whole coffee program. Just so motivated that it's like I'm starting new today. Wow. Yeah. That is, that is, that's something that can't be taught. I feel like it's no, it's, it's, no, it could, could be inspired. I could think be it inspired, could be inspired, but it's, I don't understand sometimes how I could be so excited about a, a dumb ahi tuna that I'm going to make now or miso <laughs> salmon that I'm going to, you know, and then, or, or a dumb muffin that this lady's going to make for me. Yeah. That I'm consumed by that now until something else comes next. Right, right. It just never ends. Never know. ends. With the, with, and I'm like that with the food. And I feel like that's okay. You know, a lot of people are like... Oh, yeah. my partners love it. They, they have this facade. They love it because they, you know, I, I may not be as good as them, like, you know, maybe like... In the in, finance. In the whatever. financing, but when it comes to the detail and food, that's you. you know, I'm, they know they're protected yeah. <laughs> with that. 
No, I, I mean, I, it was like not so long ago, maybe a month ago that I went to a new location you have in Sunset. Yeah. It was a weekend. I think it was a Sunday or a Saturday. Yes, I remember. And you were there with training all the new employees for the new juices and the, the new smoothies. I'm sorry. And you're so excited. So like, I mean, it's incredible to see that. And like, you know, at it's with all the shit you've been through and like, you would think that, all right, you're making all this money or, or you have this restaurant's producing, like you still shit. like, you don't give a shit. No, like, I don't give a shit. You have, he has holes in his shirt sometimes. <laughs> I see, I've seen him on his knees moving rocks to like, you know, make the store better or like cleaning some shit or in, in Midtown, I saw you picking up plates not too long ago. Like <sighs> it's, it's just crazy that like the work ethic and the, and the what, what you have in you. I mean, I do that. And I, I, I do that. And, and, and all, all my partners, we all do that. I mean, we all, yeah. We all go to the stores and, and if there's something to pick up a table, you know, we right. set the example. Wow. You know, we, we're not prima donnas at all. Yeah. We all, we all get our hands dirty. Yeah. I, I want to, um, kind of wrap this up with like another question. Uh, but I want to be mindful of your time and everything, but what would you, you know, what would you say to your, you know, 18 year old self kind of looking at yourself now where you're at, what you've been through, if you had to go back and look at that person or that maybe there's someone that's, you know, younger or older, whatever age right now, that's kind of in the middle where you were at. Maybe they're, you know, struggling their business. Maybe they're about to lose some money or maybe their things are going wrong. What would you say to that Mario or that person that's going through some shit right now that just like needs that pick me up? You know, what, what would you say to that person? Don't ever give up really? because if I could make it, anybody could make it because if you told me that I came from a wealthy family and I right. was in and out of businesses, you know, using their money and one didn't work and the other didn't work. But it's not like that. If you have that real desire in you, you could do whatever you want. And, and money is not the issue. Yeah. As long as you have that drive in you and you, you, you have it in that heart and you're an entrepreneur. Right. You should never give up on your hope. Yeah. Because if I did... I, you know, I would be flipping burgers now, maybe. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. You could don't ever be scared. People tell you, no, don't. I mean, don't take that chance. Look how many chances I took with working without permits or, you know, licenses that, and, and doing stuff like that. Wow. So yeah, you're in America. <laughs> it, <laughs> this is true. It, it all depends on you. Yeah. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, I mean the the perseverance, the patience. Because I mean, you're in there, you know, um, you know, because of, for the sake of the story. I mean, he's a young guy, but he's in his sixties now. To like to 66. keep sixty six, sixty six. Look to keep going and like going and going. A lot of kids. I mean, I find myself happening sometimes in a new venture or in a new business thing that I'm doing after like a year of doing it, I'm already like frustrated. And you're twenty, thirty years before you're like really fucking made it, yes, and it's like. Man. The patience, the perseverance, the will. I mean, it's it, it's incredible. So one of the biggest compliments I, I've ever gotten was from the person that I told you financed me and he my restaurant equipment and he would call me up all the time to I'm taking your equipment away if you don't pay yeah. me. And he never did. So ab about two months ago, he must be like 80 something. He's still in the business. Wow. ABC restaurant equipment. He says to me in the 50 years I've been in business. I've never seen anybody bounce back like you. Wow. And he has seen everything. He has seen everything because he buys restaurants out. I mean, he buys, he buys restaurants out. The equipment. Everything. Equipment, yeah. So he says, I have never seen in 50 years, Mario, somebody bounce back like you. And wow. that's been like the, that's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh, Mario, I really appreciate you coming here no today. No problem. Man. My pleasure. This has been awesome. We caught him on a Sunday when he's uh, kind of sad he's not working. But I would have been in Miami Shores with my son right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, if you like this, uh, you have to follow uh, Carrot Express. They're all over social media, Instagram. You go to their website, CarrotExpress.com, or go to any of their locations. Literally, just go to the website. If you're ever in South Florida or New York, Go on their website, see the locations they have. Go check it out. I promise you, it's the best thing lately. I've really been liking the healthy, uh, the healthy burger bowl with the turkey. I know it's weird, but I love that that shit, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. This is going to be all over iTunes, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud. Check it out on YouTube, and um, follow Mario. He doesn't have a social, but um, you can follow him around. Go to one of the Carrot Expresses on someday, and I'm sure you'll see him there cleaning up and, and <laughs> cooking, <laughs> training. So. 
Thank you guys for watching. I really, pre I really appreciate it. Subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah! All right. How did I do? Bro, you that fucking killed so it, good. man.